Here's the Surrey Venus 150mm full frame anamorphic lens. Uh, this lens has an aperture from T2.9 to 16 and a squeeze aspect ratio of 1.6x. This lens is designed for full frame mirrorless cameras. Uh, I have the E mount version, but you can also get this in RF mount, L mount, and Z mount. Squeeze aspect ratio of this lens is 1.6x, which means that if you were to pair it with a few of the mirrorless uh, cameras out there that can shoot in 3x2 aspect ratio, then you'll end up with a final image that has an aspect of 2.4 to 1. That's kind of what I would call the sort of typical widescreen cinema uh, format. Now, if you were to put this on a standard 16x9 uh, image sensor, like the one that I used, which was the Sony A7S III camera, then you'll end up with a 2.8 to 1 uh, image aspect ratio. All of my examples were shot with that format, which is a little bit wider than the standard cinema scope. Now, I personally like it. Uh, of course, if you don't like that and when you want to be able to get the 2.4 aspect ratio on a 16 by 9 image sensor camera, uh, then you can always just zoom in a little bit in post. Of course, if you do that, then you will be sacrificing the resolution just a little bit. Uh, but uh, again, personally, I don't think it makes that much of a difference, especially when you consider the kind of beautiful image quality you're going to get with this lens. If you already own the previous Surrey uh, full-frame anamorphic lenses that I've reviewed, uh, then I think this lens will match up uh, nicely with the rest of them. Uh, and, and I think it's also going to create a perfect, sort of a nice, complete cinema lens set, especially when you consider the other focal lengths, which are 35, 50mm, 
uh, 75 millimeter, 100 millimeter, and now this 150 millimeter. Now, of course, there is one more full frame anamorphic lens from Surrey, which is the 135 millimeter lens, which not many people are, you know, kind of talking about it, kind of more whispering. And I think the reason why so many people disregard that lens is because uh, it matches in every way except the squeeze aspect ratio. That lens has a bit more aggressive uh, squeeze aspect of 1.8x versus the 1.6x on all the other lenses. Personally, again, I think you can use that lens alongside this and the other uh, full frame anamorphic lenses from Surrey. Uh, and uh, of course, if you want to get around the fact that it produces a slightly wider image, you can just zoom in a little bit more. And again, I know you'll be sacrificing the resolution, but I think that lens itself still produces beautiful images and is going to then work amazingly well alongside these other full frame anamorphic lenses. <laughs> Now getting back to this 150 millimeter lens, I want to talk about the image quality, which just like with their previous lenses is uh, really good. Uh, I think it reproduces colors uh, amazingly without any noticeable shifts. It is also exceptionally sharp, yet at the same time uh, without looking too uh, artificial or too digital. Also in all of my tests so far, I have not seen any noticeable chromatic aberration or focus breathing. You will get the typical anamorphic characteristics such as the uh, stretched oval bokeh uh, or the horizontal lens flares. Now, of course, if you're not a fan of the, the horizontal light streaks, then uh, you can easily control that or get rid of it completely by using uh, different filters or matte packs. Now, something to keep in mind when you're recording with this lens is that uh, you're going to need a camera or a monitor that is capable of de-squeezing the image. Personally, I use the Atomos Ninja 5, uh, which doesn't have the 1.6x uh, squeeze aspect ratio like this lens, but it has the 1.5x, and I find that that's close enough uh, that still allows me to perfectly compose my shots and also nail the focus. Of course, there's many other monitors out there that will have similar de-squeeze capabilities. Build quality of this lens is really good, it's really solid, just like the other lenses from Surrey. The aperture ring and the focus rings are both geared and they line up perfectly with all of their other lenses. Uh, this of course makes it uh, super easy and fast to swap out lenses, especially when you have like a bigger, more complicated uh, cinema camera setup. Uh, the T2.9 uh, aperture makes this a really good low light lens and especially if you combine it with like the camera that I've been using which is the Sony a7S III. Uh, it really just means then that you can use this in like a real run and gun uh, film production where you just really don't know what the lighting conditions will be or you can't control the light. Uh, also the aperture 
has 16 blades, which is what uh, produces those really beautiful and smooth bokeh. Now, another thing that really impressed me uh, is the minimal focus distance of only 0.58 meters. Uh, especially when you consider that this is a 150 millimeter lens, it actually makes it a really good macro lens. I was able to capture some really amazing details without the use of any diapters. So now that I have this lens and all the other full-frame anamorphic lenses from Surrey, uh, I feel like I'm finally ready to test them all out on an actual film project. If you want to see those results and my opinion, uh, then definitely follow me on my website at tomantosfilms.com. Uh, of course, uh, as always, make sure you subscribe and uh, drop me a comment actually below. Let me know what kind of a film project maybe I can create uh, that you think would be a perfect test for these lenses. Anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.